Let's just get over there, Big Joe. Well, hey guys, welcome to 2023 at Cross Timbers Bison. I'm Dusty Baker. Um, uh, we are out here with Big Joe. If you guys would just, that are some of you that are joining us in the early broadcast here with Big Joe, let me know if you got a good sound check here. You can hear me okay, see me okay. Give me a, give me a thumbs up or something. You know, when you're out here in the country, out in the out here, you uh, sometimes don't know about service. So, and the big guy's about to climb in my ATV here with me. So, <laughs> hey guys, everybody, hello from Australia. There, hello, Dixie, Brogan, Melissa. It's a uh, if if I don't respond uh, to some of your questions and and uh, and hellos and things like that, everybody, it's because this this guy over here kind of keeps my attention. So forgive me if I don't respond to you, but I'll do my I'll do my best. Thank you, Matt, for the heads up on the audio, and uh, thank you, Travels with Tracks, Debbie. Hello, guys. Hello, hello, Paul. Thank you, guys. Happy New Year to you guys. Happy New Year, Stephen. Um, we got the big guy here. He was actually just up here all by himself for some reason. And, uh, I'm going to throw you some cubes down here. So you'll give me a little bit of breathing room. He's, uh, he gets to where he about climbs in his ATV with me every now and then. So it's, a <laughs> he's a mess and he's pretty gentle, but you don't like him to keep getting too close. So anyways, I just wanted to do. I, uh, it's been a while since I've done a live and it's the new year and uh, I've got a good video coming out this Thursday of kind of a uh, kind of an emotional um, video for me kind of a uh, the start of a process it's gonna take a, a little bit but we've kind of made some changes with the entire cross timbers bison herd and it has to do with my original herd and uh, and so anyways uh, you guys stay tuned for um, a Thursday's video here on YouTube and um, just some changes are being made and I'm excited about the changes and um, me and Marissa and Kevin uh, did something this past weekend so you'll see that live on Thursday and so stay tuned for that but anyways uh, hope you guys had a great New Year's and uh, we are excited for the new year um, and and the changes that are taking place at Cross Timbers Bison, we are excited to move into the Ponderosa Barn merchandise wise. And uh, if you haven't, you could go back and see that video from last Thursday that we did. Um, of, of the whole moving party had mom's help, Kevin's help, and uh, my sister Katie, and then uh, and then Marissa was finally able to get in there and kind of do all of her changes and whatnot. So um that was fun to uh move over there finally and get that office finished was which is a uh, super exciting to to uh finally see the steps in, in motion and things like that so but um i'm gonna flip this around so uh you guys can see the big guy and then the um the females are coming now too here so you guys can can see this real quick so the females are out there they're coming so i'm sitting in pasture one um so we've got uh there's the ponderosa barn and we've got the big guy here eating cubes that i've dropped for him so i'm gonna stay back here's this is where i normally sit in the atv but i'm completely over here so that uh so that he'll give me some room let's see but he's he's definitely crawling in the atv at this point his whole head takes up takes up the Polaris. I'm gonna throw him some cubes down here. Get him back a little bit. So get a good look at the big fella. But uh, they're all here. Come the rest of them. And there's a Texas mama there. There's the boss cow, 32. She's uh, come in for the party. There and there's our jumper, 54. Yep. And there's the other Texas mama right there, 54. He, if you guys haven't seen 54's athletic ability, that's uh, okay. But she's uh, she's been kind of a little pain here lately. 
with her jumping skills. There she is. Yep, she's kind of a mess. But um, let's see, I'll throw you some cubes. Out here for all you guys, gals. Big joke, get out. Get out of here. Give me some room, brother. All right, there we go. Now I can give me some room here. Deborah, thank you. I appreciate the uh, positive remarks there from Iowa. Hello there, Bob Baker from Minnesota. <laughs> Tiffany's asked, has 54 taught anyone else to jump? So far, 54 has not taught anyone else to jump, which is, which is a good thing. So, oh gosh, dang it, he scared me. Come up and bump my shoulder. The ATV is not the safest um, way to feed. As you can see here, get back, get back, buddy. You're way in here. Back up, back up, Big Joe. Here you go. You guys, get away from me. <laughs> Give me a little space. Live with bison is not the easiest. It's kind of a challenge. So you guys can't already tell. It's a, and you got this guy right here. Up in my grill. And that's not exactly who you want up in your face. He's pretty and he, he looks good, but he sure is big. So. Dude, you've got to back up. You're a big dude. You got cubes. You've got the cubes. I gave you, I gave them to you. They're over there. Look, Big Joe. There. I'm trying to throw them away from everybody else. So. See, I thought it was just gonna be me and Big Joe able to chat, but uh, the rest of the crew Saw the ATV and they made a run for it. So, Couchman Sharon, yeah, Dusty, you have them spooled. I do for sure have them spooled. You know, this time of the year, we we give them hay, and then like you've seen, I, I give them cubes probably every other day, maybe every third day. Um, so, uh. This uh, time of the deer, this time of the year, we just this is all part of it the cubes thing. So they get used to the ATV, they see it like look at the yearlings. You guys can see the yearlings over here, they're all lined up because they see the ATV as well. Oh, some rowdy mamas! So, yeah, they they get used to eat. get back, get back. Dude, Big Joe, get back, buddy. Get out of my ATV. You're wearing me out. And I'm kind of facing this way because we've got a south wind right now, and it's uh, the windshield blocks it, so we're not. You guys don't have to deal with the wind on this situation, so that's kind of why I'm sitting like this. But. Let's see Liam asked can you tell us about Big Joe's gen genetics uh, I, I honestly don't know um, anything about his genetics he's been uh, we had his hair pulled several years ago and um, had it sent off so he's in he's registered uh, but he doesn't have any linkage to him so far the previous uh, see I got Big Joe when he was I think five and um 
the guy didn't really remember where he got them from. Um, he said something about Kansas, and then he had two more cows with him, too. So he said he wasn't for sure um, if he was from Kansas. He may have got some. Uh, maybe the cows came from the Goodnight uh, Texas herd down, down in that area. So I don't know exactly where Big Joe came from. So um, I, uh, I wish I did know. Uh, but maybe if somebody else would register, um, you know, and hit their genetics could line up with the um, North American Bison Registry, we could find out. But it's really hard to tell if the previous owner didn't know his background um, or or the where the where he came from. And I wish he did. So, um, but that's just that's just part of it. So, Brogan, thank you for the super chat there. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. That's uh, that's good stuff right there. No, no, this big fella right here appreciates it. So, uh, when you get their hair pulled, basically, if uh, how that works is, I, I register my animals and I pull hair on them, so they go into a database, basically, where they uh, so you can match their calves up. So like, if this cow has a calf. And then I pull hair on her. I can send it in on the, from the calf, send it in, and the calf is registered at that point. And, um, you know, if anybody else has registered to this lineage of this specific cow or Big Joe, they have to send their hair samples in. And that's the only way to really match up the genetics. Everybody has to sort of partake in that. And um, it, 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 not all bison producers register their register their bison they don't pull hair on all their bison and stuff like that and so not everybody's done it and if not if if people that have haven't done it uh that may have part of his genetics you'll never know because they haven't registered their bison and pulled hair and done all that so it's kind of hard to trace them back unless other people have done it so i hope that helps on the genetic side of it to answer some of you guys' questions, so. Hey, Nick from uh, the UK. Thank you guys for watching. Melissa48 says, will there be any spring babies? Um, oh, we typically don't have any babies until May. And this year we had a wild case of five of them were born in uh like august 20th um time frame so um yeah we should we should have babies the dunbar herd uh mama should have uh their babies this year so possibly eight from there and uh and then we should have uh maybe i don't know seven six or seven from here possibly Jeez, boy. You. Uh, Karen asked, uh, how long does the average bison live? Well, get back, get back, buddy. They can live um, up to 20 to 30 years um, is their life expectancy. Hey, back up, back up. This guy's not giving me any room. Big Joe, you're making this hard on me. I threw your cubes out, buddy. Sorry, getting a little sidetracked here. Now they're in the ATV. Jeez, look at all the slobber you got on my ATV. Um, let's see here. Sorry, getting distracted. Raya, thank you so much. Wow, that is an awesome, awesome uh, giving right there. So much. I know you've been watching for a long time and, <laughs> and have seen all these shenanigans and um, you're a great supporter. Thank you, Raya, very much for um, that. And Happy New Year to you. Oh. 
I love the profile picture too, by the way. <laughs> Looks like a little um, Australian Shepherd. Beautiful dogs. Hello, Curtis from Iowa. Um, yeah, Monica says, you know, it's amazing just how great Big Joe is with, with you considering you didn't raise him from a calf. He's just super special individual. Yeah, he's uh, he's kind of unique because he, he, what's crazy about him is we had a hard time working him because we got him. He was already five years old and um, he, he was kind of ornery and, and hard to work because he had never been handled before and we were you know once we started working him and he's been worked four or five times now since we got him he's so much better and he handles so much better but i was lucky uh to whenever i got him i, I knew that uh you know when you when you buy bison and you look at bison you you definitely have to judge on on their character and how crazy they are and and those sort of things uh, you have to look at all those things, and of course, we're not going to buy any crazies, but um, luckily, the owners before spent a lot of time with him uh, and, and like feeding him every day and whatnot, they, and they took care of him very well, and so because they spent so much time with him and Kit and Flo, they're a lot calmer now, and, um, and that's what we try to do when we raise our animals is we, uh, we, you know, like the calves, when we pin them up and they're weaning them, we try to spend time with them. We go in the pens with the calves and they get used to us going in and out. And uh, that's kind of how you do it whenever you're, they're young and we're able to do that. So that's kind of our strategy to sort of, um, maybe the word is habituate, get them used to people so that when you do get them on your property, um, they're not wild and crazy and run through your fences and they're not um, overly dangerous to people um, because they're kind of wild so that's kind of why we we do that hey there Carla thank you for uh, for your support and thank you for being on here Carla I appreciate it she's part of the herd manager club thank you yeah, Margaret said Big Joe's climbing right into the cat with you. Yeah, he will. And you got the boss cow here. She she makes me nervous. These, these horns and that look in her eye makes me really nervous too. I'd rather have Big Joe in here with me than her. Oof. Mm, let's see here. Look at him. He's just waiting. Yeah, Margaret, I agree. Nice gift from um, Rhea there. Thank you so much. Yeah, I just, I can't believe how far this has come, you know. When I started this and started raising them in 2018, started filming them in 2019, and, you know, it's pretty wild how far it's came. And, they, you know, speaking of him, speaking of this guy that's climbing in, in here with me again, back up, buddy. You know, he's made a huge difference, and we're lucky to have a bull like him. And at, at the age that we got him at, we, uh, you know, bulls like him and Dunbar really changed the channel and uh, changed kind of our outlook on things. And so we've been blessed to be able to do this and very thankful um, and, and where we're at today. And we just uh, we want to keep growing and we're able to do that. We're able to. Uh, keep doing that just from hard work, you know, and, and, uh, support from, from family and friends and you guys watching us and our crazy shenanigans. So we, uh, we appreciate it and we, we're excited for the future and all this, but we love, we definitely love raising these animals. So See, when you're not paying attention, this is what happens. He just sneaks in behind you and starts tapping me on the shoulder. <laughs> Literally. He's just wanting some cubes. 
Um, Pamela asked, uh, how much does a uh, bag of cubes cost? Um, right now, let me think. Those bags, a 50-pound bag is ten eighty, a bag. When I first started Raisin Bison in 2018, there were seven twenty five for a 20% or 14% cattle range cube. That's how much they were. And um, four years later, COVID and all that, they're, uh, they're almost $11 now. Matthew asked, do you have any plans to purchase any more stock anytime soon? No, I really, really don't plan on it. We are we're kind of at capacity here at the Ponderosa. Um, and I'm, I'm at a comfortable place as far as um, land management and acres and grazing and all that. So we're, I think we're kind of at a stop standstill as far as purchasing um, bison. That's a, that's a good question, though. Marianne asked, uh, hello from California. Uh, how does Eleanor rank with the yearlings? Is she still as shy as she is with the rest of the crowd? No, not with yearlings. She's not as shy. Um, she's, she's, she can kind of be the boss in that yearling group now that she's the oldest one in there. But we're, uh, we're going to move her soon uh, back with the uh, Dunbar herd. So we'll, uh, we'll do that here pretty soon and let her and her baby out. Uh, Kathy asked, what can you do if one decides to get hostile? Um, the really, the only time they ever get hostile, I say, is or just rowdy is when you have them pinned up and you're working them. But that's just because they don't like cornered. Um, every every animal, pretty sure, doesn't like to be pinned up and cornered. And, you know, that's just something that we have to deal with when you work them. But that's only twice a year. So, but, if, uh, you know, just like him, just like Big Joe, every time he's worked, he, he works really well now. Uh, from the first two times, we couldn't even get him running down an alley into a squeeze chute. And now, um, it's not that bad of a process with him. So, it's uh, he, he gets better and better every time. So, the more you work him, it seems the better it gets. They, It's routine to him now. Uh, Gene asked, what can you do about the bison that is jumping the fence? Well, she's right here hanging out. Oh, she's behind the, she's in front of the ATV. But um, 54, because she's doing that, I hadn't seen her do it here in the past week. But she, uh, because of that, it's one of those situations. If she starts teaching the others to do it, um, it starts damaging the fence possibly. Um, it, it can be one of those things where you have to decide what you want to do with her. I mean, it's just like a goat or a sheep that gets out all the time and you have to put it back in. They're going to eventually teach the others how to do that. And so what we do is we, uh, we, you, you may have to look at a situation of getting rid of them, to be honest with you. Um, so we hope that we don't have to do that. And when I say get rid of them, you just take them to the sale barn or sell them to somebody else. Um, but you just don't want her to teach the rest of them. And then we'll have major problems if she is. So it's just one of those things we'll kind of have to work out and see if she keeps doing it. But we're going to do our best to try to not have to sell her and whatnot. So happy new years to you guys. Um, you know, Ada, Pat, um, Pony Girl. Thank you guys. Um, Pony Girl asked, are the ponds filling up enough to keep refreshed water? Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if you can see that one. Let me zoom in here. That pond is filled up. There's a pond that, that one, this summer, almost went almost completely dry. Um, got some ponds in the back that, have, that are filling up. So, yes, they're, they're getting there. Thank you for asking. Susie Q asked, how was your family vacation? Um, it was good. It was good to, you know, relax and and uh, not have anything to do and hang out with the family. Tammy asked, I'd like to try buy some meat. Do you have a small sample box of burgers to try instead of a huge box? No, with our shipping and stuff, we uh, uh, it's it's uh, easier for us. And it's just a, it's a, 
it's a process where we are able to uh with the freezer packs and the storage uh, container the cooler that it goes in uh, we we do the big boxes only um the only way to really uh get samples or anything is if you come to sulfur you can go to my mom's uh, uh boutique or store it's in downtown sulfur and uh, she sells bison meat in there and you can buy individual um you know steaks and burgers and ground meat Uh, Judy asked, where is Thor? Okay, so I replied to some of you guys um, here recently, but uh, what we did with Thor is he kept... Ouch. Easy. Um, Thor uh, had been running away, basically, and, and going down to the neighbors. He kept... There's a neighbor dog down the road, and he went and stole his food, kept eating his food, and so the neighbors kept calling and saying, your dog's out. Then he showed up at the vet clinic and getting out on the main road. There's a major highway not far from us. And so he was, and he was teaching Jackie all those bad things. So we decided to uh, take him to mom and Kevin's where they actually have another female Pyrenees he can hang out with. So happy, happy New Year's, Deborah. Thank you. <laughs> Texas T said we, we need a little Joe. <laughs> yeah, we do. Maybe someday. Tony asks, are big Joe calves big like him? Uh, is there a difference in size between the bull calves? Um, well, I, had a, I haven't had big Joe long enough to have his calves grown up to be full grown. I haven't had that opportunity yet. So we won't know uh, until they, you know, he's seven years old now. So there's no way of knowing how big they actually can be if they turn out to be like him until you know you can kind of start to guess and see them as their calves and you can evaluate them from there uh when they're born but other than that it's very hard to tell how big they'll be you know you can kind of see we, we like to look at them when they're two years old for breeding age um if they if they're how they're going to look and stuff like that so we, we don't it's actually hard to know, but you can look at bull calves and see kind of their size when they're little and stuff, but it's hard to know how big they're going to really be. Yeah, Penny, there's a uh, lots of wood bison up there in Canada. There's some up in Northern American too, but yeah, I like how they, they do a lot of uh, bison um startups up there and, and they have a lot of wild bison herds i like to keep up with up there it's pretty neat um sharon asks what defines the looks of the horns uh these bulls typically have you know i mean this sort of light curve back in you know, every now and then I've seen some cows that have this really curvature. It's kind of strange. You don't see it that often, but it happens. But uh, the bulls typically kind of do this kind of go straight up sort of situation. Um, but I don't know. It's just something that you have to see several times. You can see these cows. I don't know. But you can really tell when they're young, their horns and how they look. Or, or you, I can I can look at a look at calves and tell you if they're uh, a bull calf or a heifer calf when they're that young, just by looking at their horns. But they pretty much end up about the same as a as an adult back up. Sorry if you guys are catching some of the wind here. Um, Nick asked, "Do we sh ship your jerky to the U.S.?" Yes, we we do. Um, Corinne, is that how you say it? Uh, from Texas. Uh, so great to see your bison. For the young bison, at what age do they have all their teeth to be able to eat cubes? Um, that's a good question. I've seen, I've seen, uh, I've seen the three and 
three or four month year old calves eat feed, uh, smaller feed, not cubes necessarily. But um, I, I'm sure at weaning age, six or seven month old calf can eat cubes at that point. But they have teeth pretty early. I, I've seen them eat grass and, and uh, eat grain at three or four months old. Gosh, this leather, sorry. It's making all kinds of <laughs> noise in here. Big Joe is just literally hanging out in here with me. Lori asked, do you put out cubes every day and how many bags do you use each day? We don't do it every day. Um, like the yearlings, I'll probably do, oh, get back, get back. They're really hovering me right now. Get back. Um, we, I give cubes to the Big Joe herd probably two or three times a week. Um, I give cubes to my yearlings over there uh two or three times a week so you're probably looking at six bags a week um between these two herds and then um the same thing with the dunbar herd you're probably getting two or three bags over there so you're looking at probably nine to ten bags of cubes a week that we're doing right now and it's just an easy supplement of protein uh to give them during the winter besides uh there's no you know there's no there's no grass to graze right now and so uh they're eating a lot of hay and um uh, it's just a little extra supplement and some protein form uh, this time of the year. But so you're looking at, you know, roughly 10 bags a week um, for all three herds, Haas herd, the Big Joe herd, and the Dunbar herd. And, uh, you know, they're like, like I said, about $10, $80, $11 uh, for a 50-pound bag. So do the math on all that and how many pounds we're actually feeding. So... Hey, Leonard, Dylan Hansen, yes, because some of it is my reason. Yeah. D Thank you, Leonard, for your answering some questions for me. I may not see them all. I get, it gets pretty, pretty distracted easy. I'm always trying to watch my back, and especially in this ATV. Uh, I probably need a solid cab ATV. It would be better, but yes, thank you again, Carol, for your support. Uh, Liam asked, why did you decide not to add Big Joe and another young bull together? Oh, uh, that's because there's only eight females out here. That's plenty for Big Joe um, to to cover uh, during breeding season. And then you look out there, and you've got Haas with 21 females. So, And Haas is the young bull. Uh, y there's no – I can't put Big Joe and, an, and a young bull in here with this many females because – there's just not a lot of competition if there was 20 females or 15 females in here it may be a little different but i don't have to do that quite right now um this, and that's the same way with dunbar as well so jay thank you for the super chat did you know that bison have incomplete media stinums? is that how you say that and are easy to kill one arrow in the side of a chest and they get a bilateral pneumothorax. Interesting. I did not know that. But, uh, you know, first thing I think about is uh, <laughs> I think about uh, the Native Americans and how they use bows and arrows to take a big beast like this down. I don't know how, uh, how that even happens. And, and, and do it all on horseback. There's Jackie. Oh, she's stopping to hang out. Jackie's out in the pasture. Thank you for the question, Jay, or information. That's that's good. I had no idea. Uh, Doreen asked, how is Eleanor and Nora? They're doing great. Um, let me think. Uh, you'll see them soon again. 
they're, they're doing good. But like I said, I'm going to let Eleanor, Eleanor and Nora, I think they're both um, good to go back out in the pasture and hang out with Dunbar. So. Uh, Deborah asked, do you still do the lick tubs? Uh, yes, I have them out in both pastures right now. And, and that's a good little supplement for them too, as well. They're just, uh, they're, they're, you know, they're like $100 for a 200 pound tub. So, Mike, do you carry a weapon for safety? Um, I do not carry a weapon. I don't think that I, uh. Get back. Get back, dude. I don't think that I'm going to use a gun on my bison. I, I shouldn't have to. If uh, if I have to use a gun on them, then that's probably my fault in the first place. So, um, for putting myself in a situation. But Thank you, Steven. Watch from the UK. Thank you. Becky asked, uh, new to your channel, what happened to the Texas 4? The Texas 4 are currently in here, um, right here. There's the jumper right there. And one right there. They're still here. Uh, Popcorn uh, passed away a long time ago. Her health was not very good when I got her, unfortunately. Joe Ramsey, thank you. Thank you for the super chat, Joe, and the support. We, uh, we definitely appreciate it. Look at look at that dog out there. Just living the dream in the bison pasture. Gosh dang it. God, he sneaks up behind me. Went all the way around the ATV. Surprise. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony, for the super chat as well. And the support, I know. This big guy right here appreciates it. <laughs> he's he's been in here hugging me, uh, wanting some more cubes. So, you know, these little these little super chats and and little supports like this, guys. That's that's <laughs> that's where it goes to. Um, I just brought a bucket out here today as I fed him some cubes. I think uh, yesterday, maybe the day before. So I wasn't gonna do a full sack because I thought it was just me and him, but the whole crew showed up. So, um, thank you guys for the. For the support and donations. Thank you. Matt asked, will you integrate the two herds at some point? Um, two herds as in uh, um, Haas and Big Joe. I don't think so. I kind of like to keep my breeding uh, herds separate. And that way I can keep up with um, the sires and dams. Um, so we'll see how the future goes. And that depends on pastures. That depends on fence uh building and all that so hey there colby thanks buddy for watching colby always is tuning in we're uh colby's out in tuttle doing always doing stuff together just ranching just bison ranching in oklahoma that's what we're doing that's right colby Let's see. Oh, now he's going to get him a good scratch right here. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Smash that like and share for Cross Timbers Bison. Dude, this guy has such a big, thick head of hair. He normally doesn't let me touch him this much, but he's uh, he knows he got lots of did have cubes for him he appreciates it look at this big old thick head of hair you need to back up now judy asked so the electric color didn't work on thor no he just ran right through it it didn't didn't matter he just kept on going <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I, I probably won't mix. Uh, Liam, just to clear up that question, I may not have answered it correctly. Sorry, buddy. Um, I, I, I probably won't put uh, Haas's herd with the Big Joe herd. I won't create one um, big group. I'll just probably just keep the two separate. So. Hey, Tom from Australia. Uh, Carver asked, I, I do not think uh, Joe would ever hurt you intentionally. No, and to be honest with you, most of the time that uh, bison injuries happen um, is is mostly, I'm probably going to say 99% of the fault is the people. The people are in their way. Um, and, you know, m minus the Yellowstone and Custer State Park, those sort of inc instances, it's uh, it's just the people. So if a, if a bison does hurt somebody, unless the bison was just absolutely crazy, it's typically the person's fault for kind of being in the, uh, the wrong place, the wrong time and in their way. And, and they're not going to try to intentionally hurt you. Like a mama with a calf, she's going to try to hurt you because she's protecting her calf, which that's what they do in nature versus the wolves and the bears. They're going to fight against the bears and the wolves to keep uh, them away to protect their herd and protect their calves so it's just nature for these animals to to do those things so you, you can't blame them um and you just hope that people aren't seriously injured uh cindy asks have you come across any white buffalo in your travels i've seen some white buffalo um but it is it's uh it's very rare uh for there to be white bison and if there are um it's it's very rare for them to be like from two bison uh, a lot of the times people sell white bison uh and sell the whole white bison and i say that white bison um and they mix breed them with um charlay cattle to create the white look and a lot of the bison unfortunately if you do see white bison, I'm not saying all the white bison, but a big portion of the white bison that you may see today, especially on private ranches, are, are mock-ups. They're fake uh, white bison. And, I'm, uh, and that's just what I've learned and, and seen and, and talked to others. Um, and people try to sell that whole white bison thing. But it is very rare to have a true uh, you know, male and a female bison breed and have a white bison it, it's just it's it happens but it's very rare um so if you see a lot of them and somebody has a bunch of them it's probably because they're uh, mixed breeding them with cattle which is in my world um that's a huge no-no we do not support that whatsoever uh lady Inky asked, uh, do you have any predators? We have coyotes, but that's it. They ain't getting close to these animals. And maybe some, you know, wild dogs. And people that let go and don't raise them anymore or take care of them. Um, Michael Hill, thank you again. Thank you for a super chat. We appreciate it, Michael. Thank you. Judy asks, what happened to the one that had the hernia? His name was Lumpy. Uh, Lumpy, um, his health was going down, so we had to make a decision, and uh, we had to take Lumpy um, to the processor, and then uh, we've donated his meat. And uh, I, I said that we were going to do that a long time ago, and that's what we ended up doing. So he was just uh, in a place where he, he we did the best we could and got him in a healthier place, and had him uh, growing and but uh, the hernia just was pulling him down and I, I was tired of seeing it and so um, we had to we just had to get him into a better place
Um, Liam asked, what is a bull like Big Joe worth? That's a hard number to really say. I, I honestly don't know how much he's worth. He, he's worth a, a lot to me just, um, you know, because he's an awesome bull and he he's super nice and uh, he's been really good to us and I, I can't complain. So I don't know what you kind of number you put down on an animal like him. I mean... You can go. You can go to a bison sale in Denver, and they sell. Uh, well, they hardly. They never sell full-grown bulls there. They only sell. I think two-year-old bulls is the oldest, and they can. I mean, they can range anywhere from four to twenty thousand dollars for a for a breed bull. Yes, Gigi. Thank you for clearing that up for me. Lumpy's health was getting worse as time went by. Yep. So thank you. Clearing that up for me. Thank you, Pedmart. Yeah, it's uh, we're lucky. It's it's pretty with the sun setting over here. We're uh, this is a good spot. I'm up here on the hill. I can't get down there too far because it uh, <laughs> we don't have any service. Ryan asked, "Do you have a problem with feral hogs?" We don't here on this property. I've seen signs of them. But uh, there are problems in this county. Yes, we do have lots of wild pigs. Hey, Zandy from South Texas. Hello, Deborah from Georgia. Thank you for watching our channel. Oh, look at him. He's just hanging out. Staying close to the ATV. Uh, Jen asked, do you want to continue both farms? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think my mom and Kevin like waking up and seeing the bison out there. So, of course, we're, we're going to keep some at mom and Kevin's for sure. Um, let's see. Judy asks, I've been enjoying the bison snack, t snack sticks, but I prefer bland foods. Do you think you'll ever create a mild version? Actually, the uh, original is supposed to be pretty, pretty our, kind of our mild sort of um, original flavor. But, um, it, you know, it kind of does have just a little, little pizzazz to it, which uh, I love it. But I, I don't know. We, we may keep doing a couple different varieties of it. We'll see what we do. He's getting into my seeds. Get out of there, Big Joe. Angel, who is your favorite uh, bull, Big Joe or Dunbar? You know, I that's a really tough question as far as who are my favorite, but I always have to give um, credit and love to Dunbar. Dunbar was... So I kind of have to give some love to Dunbar. He's He was one of the first ones when I started this that really kind of... Uh, grew on my channel, so. Uh, Liam asked, uh, you're asking lots of good questions, Liam. It's okay, buddy. Um, I, uh, she, he said, uh, will you keep Eleanor's bull? Uh, no, I plan on selling Eleanor's bull in um, March 11th at Springfield, Missouri. We are combining with the Oklahoma Bison Association and the Missouri Bison Association are combining um, this coming spring to do a, a bison sale. And like I said, it'll be March 11th. If some of you are interested in going, uh, you can um, attend. It will be in Springfield, Missouri, March 11th. I'll be uh, giving more information on that as well as time goes on. That's kind of my first announcement for it, actually. So uh, I'm going to plan on taking him up there. Lifetime Moments video. Will you consider building a below-ground greenhouse on your property? I didn't even know you could do that. Below ground in Oklahoma is very difficult. Um, the only thing that we do uh, below ground in Oklahoma is um, um, storm shelters, just because we have a lot of clay problems and uh, 
you know, earth moving. It's like it's it's a big process. Nobody nobody builds basements in Oklahoma uh, just because mostly of the clay uh, contracting and expanding. Um, so most people just don't do it. But that's interesting. Uh, B. Lammer asked, how much do they eat per day per bull? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, if we were feeding them, grain feeding them, we'd feed probably, you know, kind of a number we like to feed is three pounds a day. Phyllis asks, have you considered building a house on the Ponderosa? Yeah, we have. Um, but we're kind of, we're not in a rush or anything, so... But we have talked about it. Me and Marissa have. Thank you, Ramona. Bison sticks are the best. We love them. I, I love them too. I eat them honestly. I eat them daily. If I'm out and about and didn't have time to grab lunch, so it's a quick, uh, quick little easy, healthy um, snack. Karen asked, "Do you watch Yellowstone?" Oh yeah, of course we do. That's like a Sunday ritual. Uh, we love Yellowstone. We, we love everything about it. It's pretty awesome. Well, this is pretty. 11 here. Little Texas cow outside, lay down. This is one of the feeding areas here. I like to put out hay. That's why you see so many cow patties. So um, that's why there's a lot. I've been rolling out hay right here. So this is where they've been hanging out. But 11, she's chilling right now. She's a big cow. She didn't have a baby this year. Um, like You know, she came from Texas. So wasn't sure what they were going to have. But she's had some time with Big Joe. She should be able to have a calf this year. <laughs> Tammy saw a sign in Jamestown, North Dakota. If you cannot run at least 40 miles an hour, then stay out of the pasture. <laughs> yeah, that is true. These suckers can run. Happy New Year, Tony. Thank you. Um, Nora, I know some of you have asked about Nora, uh, Zandy, and um, Deborah asked about Nora. Oh, Nora's baby, she's doing good. I saw her this morning, and she's, she's gaining weight. She's getting big. She's not huge, but she's, <laughs> she's growing. Thank you, um, Angel64. Congratulations on almost 180,000 subs. Yep, we, I'm, I'm excited. It's, uh, it's fun doing this. Thank you. Oh, the foster fam caught another live. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Chad, got a good round bell ring. You know, we've talked about doing the round bell thing, but um, I just started spreading out the, 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 the hay here. We just, uh, the whole regenerative thing of spreading the seeds out and the native grass seeds on your pasture. And so, and the main thing I like about spreading it out is they all they don't have to compete they can all spread out and eat at the same time too so they're not competing for for food when you spread the hay out um kathleen you know i get that question a lot i was wondering about their hooves do you ever need to trim them uh we don't um uh, if they get bad or they're in bad shape we'd have to run them through a squeeze chute and probably do it but i haven't had to do that yet hopefully don't have to um joanne asks, uh love watching hoss grow do you think he'll be a good breeding bull i hope so i think he will yeah he comes from a good lineage and and stuff so i think he really could be for us um donald asked how long do bison live for 20 to 30 years Marion, how did the chickens and charlie do in the last storm they they did great they were awesome 
I kept them warm and got them a heat lamp and some nice blankets and stuff inside the barn. Angel 64, our entire family gets together on Sunday night for Yellowstone. Tonight is a mid-season finale. I know, you know, it's Yellowstone. I, I give so much praise to uh, Taylor Sheridan for what he's done just for the, uh, just a Western world. And, uh, you know, he's just, he's brought, he's brought a little bit of Western back into America. And uh, I, you know, we kind of are in that sort of lifestyle. We don't raise horses or, or cattle, but, you know, we are in that Western lifestyle and being here in Oklahoma. And so we, uh, we love what he's doing and, you know, showing people that there's a whole nother world out there that people may not know about minus all the drama and everything <laughs> that unfolds on Yellowstone. But show us, did the bison enjoy the cold? They love the cold. These, these guys are just, they're, uh, they're tough animals. They, uh, they love it all. They can handle it. They're all chilling now. Finally got them to chill out. So Kathleen asked any more additions to Brooks's petting zoo. <laughs> Not yet. Uh, not at the moment. No additions. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll let you know if there is. May surprise you. Uh, Josh Lane asks, have y'all ever got hard winds that knock down y'all's fences? No, we haven't yet. Knock on wood. Hopefully, hopefully you don't. That's a good thing about barbed wire is it's and T posts. They're pretty tough. So thank you, Jackie Reed Perry. I don't have a question, but I do want to tell you that I just love the bison and your passion for them. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. And it, it, it is a lot of passion behind it. And, um, uh, Luckily to be doing it, and uh, I've got my wife and family that have jumped on board and all this and want to do it with me. So, thank you guys for your support. Um, DOA says, Do you drag your pasture to spread the manure? Not? I don't know, but that's something I definitely could do after the winter because they just are eating hay and stuff in the same areas. I spread it out in different parts of the pasture, but. You know, when they do this right here, they hang out in one spot for a while. It kind of stacks up, but they get to roam and all that. But that's a good idea to drag it out, possibly. Yes, Linda said, cow patties, compost for Marissa's flowers. There you go. Um, Veronica, so we get rid of 54. I, I talked a little bit about her earlier, but... Um, we if she keeps teaching if she teaches the rest of them to jump out we've got problems with 54 may have to uh may have to um <laughs> take her to the cell barn but hopefully we don't have to do that we'll, we'll deal with it as it comes leonard pratt without some spice bison can be almost tasteless yep and it's true yep i call it uh it's like a healthy clean taste is what it is in my opinion but uh suzy q Ask, will your wife have her cut flower garden again this year? Yes. We need to actually clean it up and get rid of all the dead material. Um, but, yes, she plans on doing it. After she learned a lot. I learned a lot from it. And uh, we'll make some changes to it. But I think she's definitely planning on doing it again. Thank you for asking, Susie. Don't ask, where's my Maya? Is actually at Mom and Ken's right now. We're going over there for dinner. So I'll uh, get her whenever I go over there. Uh, Michelle asks, how old is too old for them to breed? You know, that's an interesting question. Some guys get rid of bulls at nine years old, um, but they can breed up to 18, 19, 20 years. You know, it just depends on the uh, producer and what they want to do with their bulls. So, but they can, they can do their thing for a long time. Hey, Debbie from Yukon. Good to have an Oki on here. Marcus asks, is your mom's store going to be open on Monday the 2nd? I don't know. I better ask Donna. Um, if you guys ever are in Sulphur or passing through, you guys can go by the store. Uh, we've sell merchandise in there. Um, she's got a lot of cool clothing herself and all of her fashion inside the boutique. Um, but we also sell bison meat in there as well. We have a freezer uh, with a glass door so you walk in there and kind of pick out what you want. Um but I don't know if she'll be open tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's Monday. She typically is not open on Mondays, but maybe she could be. I don't know. 
um but it's an all in downtown sulfur you guys can stop there and do some shopping and find some cross timbers buy some merchandise and maybe meet donna Well, guys, I am going to, uh, let's see here. I'm going to get off here. I've got to do some more chores. We're supposed to get rain tomorrow. And um, look out. We're supposed to uh, get some rain tomorrow. So I'm going to throw some uh, seeds out that I got um, from a, a friend, follower. And um, so... And then, uh, you know, you got to go home and watch, uh, you got to have dinner and you got to watch Yellowstone. So I got to get home for that. So thank you guys for reminding me of that. Thank you guys for the super chats um, and your, your donations. Uh, I'm able to uh, you know, do, do simple things like this and, and give, a, give these animals cubes and just uh, some little bit of love and stuff from, uh, you know, for the winter, from the supplements that we can give them. Um, and, you know, uh, my wife comes out here and doesn't get to see the bison near as much as me, but she comes out here and when she does, she's like, man, they look good. These animals look good. And um, I think they do too. And that's just hard work from from uh, Kevin and I, you know, uh, that we put into this. And, uh, we, we try to take care of these animals as best as possible. And uh, we want them to be healthy. And uh, if you've got healthy bison, you've got a better... Uh, We've got a better system hopefully in production and a business strategy um, when you do those things and so uh, we kind of keep all that in mind as far as the business side of things and um, plus these animals they deserve it this is America's mammal and uh, they deserve the best and we try to give them that here and so yeah so that's kind of that's that's what we do thank you Tara Perrin, thank you for another super chat. Being Native American, I loved how you teach people how Native love the bison and how much we depend on them. Absolutely. Growing up in Oklahoma, uh, you know, you just, and I, I'm here in Chickasaw Nation area of Oklahoma. And so, and you grow up in, in, the, in a, in a uh, you know, what was Indian territory at one time, you kind of naturally grow up into that uh, culture. And uh, I'm, I don't think I'm Native American. I could have a little bit, but I've never been tested for it or nothing. So I, uh, I, I appreciate the American culture growing up and growing up in it and just fascinated with it. Then I was able to teach it in, uh, in Oklahoma history. And then I got interested in bison and worked with bison and then learned about that culture. And uh, I love it and I love learning more and more about it. And I appreciate the Native American culture and how the bison was such an essential animal to them and how they, they just they relied on this animal for so many things that this that this animal one animal can provide so many things and it's amazing uh, what this animal um, provides today and what it has for hundreds of years and uh, a survivor of the last ice age guys right here um, it's crazy so very thankful for him and an amazing animal and we get to raise them and bring it all to you. So thank you guys for watching and being a part of this. Josh Lane, thank you uh, for uh, for the support there in the super chat. You guys are awesome. You uh, you guys, I you know, you guys are great uh, followers. And, uh, you know, starting this 2023, 20, we're going to come into our fifth year um, come this uh, March. March. It'll be our fifth year of raising bison. And so um, thank you guys for your support. Um, thank you for being a part of the journey and uh, and uh, all the changes that have taken and all the, the pains uh, that we go through on this. So we uh, we try to be fluent with you and show you everything of, of, of how to raise uh, bison and uh, just uh, doing it, you know, kind of a small local way. And, uh, in a small town in Oklahoma and uh, this is who we are and what we do so thank you guys for all your support and we love you guys following us and we thank you um, for all the comments here today and I hope you guys have a great new year um, and uh, go watch Yellowstone so, thank you guys and don't forget Thursday uh, video got some uh, I mentioned earlier in this video but uh, 
stay tuned for some changes. Speaking of changes, stay tuned for that. Um, we're kicking off 2023 with uh, some exciting happening. So, and kind of emotional for me. So as well. But thank you guys for watching. Have a great New Year's and uh, day, and we'll talk to you soon. Keep on ranching. <laughs>